Have you ever looked at an Arctic P12 and thought, well, honey, you could lose some of that weight? Yeah, me neither, but apparently someone at Arctic did. This is the Arctic P12 PVM PST Slim. What a mouthful. This is a 15 millimeter thick version of a P12. So it's a full centimeter less. This thing was created for the very rare cases. This is meant for people who are about to build inside a ultra SFF case, but you just don't have the necessary space to fit a full-blown 25mm fan. This can be for a radiator or for example as an intake fan, possibly even below a GPU. But even if I said this is the body shame version of a P12, it is not exactly a copy. It is roughly the same frame, be it a lot thinner, but the blade design has heavily changed. Now we got seven heavily bent wings that are kinda less pointy. Inside we got a fluid dynamic bearing that can make this thing spin up to 2100 rpm. So by all metrics, this is not a P12. However, there are still things that made it into the slim edition, like the 400 mm long PVM cable that has an additional splitter at the end for daisy chaining. Hence, PST, PVM sharing technology. Don't you just love how the whole industry is just milking the word technology into oblivion? Twist two cables together, power sharing technology. PET, power extension technology. Anyway, it is 15 millimeters thick. It is not going to perform like a P12. And already on the spec sheet, we can see how far we go down. Spinning at the max, we might have won some RPM, but we are down to 42.1 CFM at up to 1.45 millimeters of H2O. So compared to a regular 25 millimeter P12, we are already 20, 30% below what the fan can do on paper. And that's okay. We got some more slim fans coming. And in general, you shouldn't expect these fans to beat anything that a 25 millimeter can do. This is a special use case, so please take it as such. On the flip side, however, in a case where static pressure is completely irrelevant, there are 25 millimeter fans that are going to be beaten by a slim one, which says more about the thick one than about this, but that's their problem. We first tested the Arctic P12 Slim using the Case Fan Simulator, which measures the CPU temperature underneath a passive Nokia P1 in a wooden box where the two fans recycle the air within it. Spinning at the max 2100 RPM, the Slims did not suck. At 45.3 degrees C above ambient, they did not land at the bottom of the list, which is kinda impressive and interesting at the same time. Sure, they are spinning significantly quicker than anything even near them, but they are 15 mm thick, and compared to the original P12, we are down by 1.2 degrees C above ambient. So there definitely is a loss, but not as big as I would have thought. But we got another important comparison, the Scythe Kaze Flex 2 Slim. This one is also 15 mm thick, and it still managed to perform within a margin of error of the original P12. So there is still more that could be squeezed out of this form factor. From there we slowly lower the fan speed in 10% steps, and we note down the temps and noise to create these noise to performance lines. Here we can see a few important things, like the noise drops dramatically quick. This is the only noise measurement that we were able to do before the P12 Slim just slammed against the noise floor. And that said, at this point it was still quite louder than the regular P12, so if you were to normalize both to let's say 45 and a half degrees C above ambient, the P12 Slim will have to spin much, much quicker, making it a hell of a lot louder. And the same thing kinda applies to the Kaze Flex 2 Slim. From start to finish, its noise to performance ratio was always slightly ahead of the P12. But what about radiators? We also installed the P12 Slim onto our 80mm thick 10 FPI radiator and measured how cool the water can stay above ambient. And at 16.4 degrees C above ambient, the P12 Slim landed in the group of obviously case fans that some maniac strapped onto a radiator. However, unexpectedly, having the P12 Slim on radiator did not affect the noise in such a negative way that it did affect the Kaze Flex 2 Slim. It was still quite far from the max performance of the Flex 2 Slim, but once you make it spin slower, it actually drops down faster, making it more enjoyable overall. 
So where does this leave us? Well, it's a 15 mm fan. What did you expect? It's kind of the same situation we had with the Flex 2 Slim. As a case fan, it can do. It can recycle the air within a particularly unrestricted box, but if it has to run fast, it will be loud. On radiators, it's kind of barely hanging on. Sure, it's got its like brief moment of noise to performance, but it's devastating to see what another 15 mm thick fan could pull off. So if you are in a situation where you have only 15 mm to work with, plan your stuff. Don't expect this miniature of a fan to be able to cool down a 4900K with a 240 rad. You won't have a pleasant time. But if you are only trying to cool down 100, 200 watts using a 240 radiator, sure, you won't have to make it spin that fast overall and it will do. However, across the line, except for this moment, the Sideflex 2 Slim just seems to be the better option, especially for just intake and exhaust fans. That being said, the Flex 2 is hella expensive and this is Arctic. And right now I can get a triple pack of these for 26 euros from Arctic themselves, which is about eight and a half euros per fan. And that's one hell of a price. In fact, I can get three Arctic P12 Slims for a single Flex 2 Slim, which means that for like bang for the buck, Arctic is just unbeatable. And not to forget something that Scythe does not include, but Arctic does, which is very useful, uh, you don't only get the regular case screws with these, but you also get these really short radiator screws, which are perfect for these here, and they are so cute. But okay, I think this should be all for Arctic and their P12 Slim PVM PST. And at this point, a huge thank you to them for sending them over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to copywriting my power extension technology. If Ace Attack can milk half the industry, I can do too. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.